It's nearly Christmas time and we've been invited to the amazing Weald and Downland Museum in Sussex to enjoy a sumptuous Tudor feast. Yeah, you do know we have to cook it all first though, right? Do we? Yeah, I mean we're going to be guided through some genuine Tudor recipes and we're going to be cooking them using the tools and methods of the 16th century. And then we get to eat it. And then we get to eat it. Oh, let's go. What could be more festive than this? Lots of food, a roaring open fire, there's even a partridge hanging up there. Don't worry, it's not real. Our head chef for this episode is the brilliant Alex Compiani from the Time Traveller's Kitchen. Food historian and faithful recreator of historic dishes all year round, not just for Christmas. We'd actually met him on the channel before, when he was firing an 18th century naval cannon. So clearly, a man of many talents. And just in case you want to have a go at cooking along with us, we've put the ingredients in the description below. Wow. 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 Alex, nice to see you. How are you doing? Very well, yourself. Nice to see you again. Yeah. What, what an amazing... Tudor kitchen you've got here. Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? It's the Tudor kitchen at the Weald and Downland Museum. Uh, very privileged to be in here. It's a stunning place to actually uh, cook as well. It's yeah, really lovely. Yeah, fantastic. And what period, what period are we set up for here? This is um, around sort of 1570. It's kind of towards the end of the, uh, the use of this style of uh, kitchen. Okay. You've got the fireplace. Um, yes. The smoke basically goes straight up through a hole in the roof. Um, obviously, at this stage, they start having the more dedicated fireplaces with the chimney breasts. Uh, so this is kind of towards the end of its its life as a kitchen. And I must I place. must say as well, it's really cold in here. We need <laughs> <Yeah>. that fire <laughs> for warmth, if anything. You're, you're in t-shirts. I <laughs> yeah. mean, I'm amazed at that. Cold but, and smoky. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> but we're in t-shirts. You've got some period Tudor. Yeah, Tudor late dress. Tudor kind of. Um, Sort of, this is a singlet. Mm -hmm. um, I'm keeping my arms free because I can, you know, imagine we're going to be doing exactly. quite a lot today. Yeah. Yeah. So um, ordinarily, I'd have a doublet over the top of this, uh, which would be sort of buttoned right up to the neck, especially if I was going uh, on the serving things. But yeah. most of the cooks would be hidden in the kitchen and would never actually see the people that were eating the food. Okay, right. right. So what are we cooking? Yeah, today? what are we doing today, Alex? Well, we've got we're a doing, lot of ingredients. It's coming up to Christmas. So you've got to start thinking about the food that you're preparing. Before Christmas, you've got a huge uh, number of uh, fasting days. Okay. So the run up to sort of December and Christmas Day, it's all about fasting. It's all about not eating too much. However, from Christmas onwards, you've got the advent, you've got the 12 days of Christmas. It's party time. Yeah. Um, when you look at the records, there's uh, lots of cookbooks of the period that we can actually take references from. But these are very much the Heston Blumenthal kind of, <laughs> you know, extravagance sort of side of things. This isn't your Delia Smith, How to Boil an Egg. Right. So the reference we have are very much from sort of more high status. Okay. Um, uh, the problem is with it is you do tend to find you end up in cliches. And one of the main ones, which we still have today, is the mince pie. Um, it is a classic. It actually goes back over 2,000 years. You can actually trace the uh, really? chronologically, uh, yeah, the chronologically, the, 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 the mince pie changing and adapting. Has slightly different names, but the concepts are very much the same. In the Tudor period, we're still talking about minced meat or shred meat. Is okay. it? So we're talking about mutton, uh, beef, or even pork, sometimes a combination. And then you're adding um, spices and dried fruits to that. But the dried fruits and the spices were very, very expensive. The meat was expensive as well. This is a very much a, a, an ostentatious dish. This is very much a celebration. This isn't something you'd have every day. But as the time progressed, the fruit became cheaper and the meat became more expensive to the point where more the meat available. was left. Yeah. yeah, they left the meat out entirely. And so today, at the mince pie you have today is, is a, a, a wholly sort of fruit-based mince pie. Okay, well. We'll follow your lead then. Okay, yes, well, we'll, we'll get you working. First up, we'll be finally shredding the lamb to make our minced meat. This leg of lamb has been pre-boiled in what's referred to as sweet water. Fresh water, basically, with added herbs like bay and rosemary. So whilst Louis is doing that, um, what can we sort of infer from the Tudor Christmas sort of menu about 
the Tudor, Tudor diet in general? Were they eating a lot of meat? We you know we hear the stories about Henry VIII yeah. eating just loads of meat and pheasant yeah. and you know well, medicine. For the average population, the Tudor period was actually one of the healthiest in our sort of timeline because they were eating lots of vegetables, uh, meat was more abundant, the way of actually producing food was getting much more sort of complex and um, you know, much more scientific. But you hear sort of stories about, uh, you know, Elizabeth I's teeth were just rotting black yes. because, and I'm guessing that would have been because of the sugar. Sh yeah, pure I mean, of sugar. yeah, I mean, her head uh, cook gifted her a marzipan chessboard and we're talking quite a sizable. And That's apparently, hell. <laughs> yeah, apparently she ate the entire thing over the space of a couple of days. Right, let's get you working though. Yes, we're, okay, yeah. Right, what I can't watch do all day. Is we're going to make a uh, pastry for this to make the coffin. So, what we're going to do is in this pan, um, what I've got here is funny enough, don't waste anything. When uh, I was um, boiling the lamb, I've skimmed the uh, fat. Oh, yeah. from it and then what you do is you put the fat into um, another jar of um, a cauldron of water mm -hmm. that then lets all the odd bits settle out and when it cools you've just got the pure fat on the surface so you've got this nice clean oh, yeah. pure fat so we're going to put all of that can't see it looks in particularly there. appetizing it doesn't look appetizing but, but uh, an important part of the recipe very important so we've just put some water in there okay and what i'd like you to do and you'll probably appreciate this. By the fire? By the oh, fire. Fantastic. <laughs> so we're just going to warm that up. OK. And just need to, you to stir that until all the butter and the fat has melted into the water. And just give it a good mix. And then, yeah, just keep stirring it and stirring it. OK, yeah, I can do that. OK. We never said this was going to be a healthy Tudor recipe, but this melted fat is going to be important for binding our pastry. And, and who would be who would be working if this is a, a merchant's household? Would everyone be pitching in the kitchen, or would they have servants, or who would be working in here? Well, the funny enough, the actual food, the feasts and things like that, was usually down to the lady of the house. Okay, uh, she would be the one that would be organising it all. However, the cooks in the kitchen, generally speaking, tended to be male. Um, the there were certain aspects that were done more often by females, such as the, da the dairy would yep. be very much run by uh, females. But the actual cooks, you know, the job of the important job of being the cook would very much be with, when you're dealing with all of these spices, all of these kind of things, that would very much be uh, the, the, uh, the male. And the other thing is uh, men were actually more expensive. You had to pay them more. Okay. Uh, those in the acting trade will still feel that pain. <laughs> um, there was glass ceiling even then. But they... Um, they were also a status symbol. So especially if you could get an exotic cook, someone sort of, you know, if you had a French cook, for example, or something oh, like that, yes, that, that yeah. would be quite, you know, a, a status um, symbol. Can I just quickly ask, am I good to sort of leave it or does it require yeah, no, constant stirring? Because I... No, you can leave that for a little bit. Yeah, keep, keep, come on, keep it stirring. Give it. Stop I think my easy. eyes are about to start <laughs> watering in a sec. Luke can't handle the Tudor kitchen. Well, in the meantime, while you're waiting for that to, to melt, yeah. to melt um, if you grab that little mortar and pestle there, yeah. um, make sure it's sort of just tip out anything that might still be in there. Yeah. We're all good. Take a large pinch of salt. Okay. A bit more than that? Uh, yeah, a little bit more yeah, than that. A bit more. There we go. And then give that a good grind down. Okay. Right, I don't really know the technique, I'm embarrassed to say, of. of uh, that's Using pretty a much mortar it. and pestle, but I'm guessing yeah, it's just a, a crushing. twisting, crushing motion. Yeah, that's it. And then once you've got it mostly broken down, you can give it a good muddle. Okay, a good muddle. Yeah. Is that just like like that? Yeah. There you go. So what we've got here, we've got some lovely flour. Now this is twice bolted flour. Okay. So this is refined. Yep. Again, it's terminology, it's where being a refined person comes from. You can have refined flour ah, in your okay. baking. The amount of salt they seem to use yeah. is also quite high as well. Um, a lot of salt was used in the um, curing process of a lot of the meats. A lot of the meats were cooked in a lot of salt. So it seems, it would seem, that to our modern taste, where we're very sort of careful about our sodium intake, yeah. they would have a much higher salt intake. But then again, they would balance that with the sweetness. With the sweetness, yeah. So a lot of, sort of the sweet and savoury. So that, that should be enough in yeah, there now. there we go. Now it was time to add the melted fat to the refined flour to create our pastry mix. 
trying to keep as much of it in the bowl as possible. That's very nearly there, actually. So, and so that's going to be gonna the basis. We're going to dive in with our hands. Yep. That'll we'll be the that. basis for the pastry. Yeah. That yeah, we could do with just a little bit more. Tad more, okay. Tad more. So. It's all very much touchy-feely with uh, this kind of cooking. None of the recipes have any real quantities. Um, so, you know, it's a lot of trial and error. With the prep work done, we needed to leave the pastry to cool outside. In the meantime, the Tudor oven was being prepared. And it's not hard to see how accidents could have happened when most buildings were made of timber. So uh, John has very helpfully got the process of heating up this fantastic Tudor oven started. Yep. We've left our pastry to, to cool down so it's yep. ready for rolling. What's the next step? Uh, well, preparing the pastry. So what we're going to do, uh, I've already pre-floured the board. So this um, has been left to sort of cool Yeah, for and a you can see it's so. a lot firmer now. Yeah. So this is going to make it much better for moulding um, into the shape we want. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a slice of that off because we need that for the lid. I like this thing here. It's pretty handy. <laughs> and yeah. we're just going to give that a little light knee just to get a bit of warmth from our hands, just to get those fats to relax. The, the mm. thing is, you know, a lot of the pastry chefs will tell you now, you need to be a bit careful with pastry, a bit light, because otherwise it makes it hard. Well, you didn't tend to eat the pastry. Oh, the pastry was purely, purely to cook in. So um, you can, you know, the more you work hard in the pastry, the easier it is to form. You want it to be more like a stiff modelling clay, yeah. so you can actually uh, form it around your your coffin form. And the form that is that that basically just means the shape that you're going yes. to roll this pastry well, around. Well, the to. mince pies they didn't actually call them mince pies in the Tudor period. They're okay. often referred to either as uh, shred pies or chewits. Ch chewits. Chewits, and I think the chewits actually comes from the pastry itself. So a shred pie would be one in a coffin that you could just take the meat out of. Yeah. A chewit would be one where you would actually eat the pastry as well. Interesting. Now, um, now, Alex, on the subject of pies, you know, you mentioned how these ingredients they're they're quite expensive. Yes. So, you know, I've heard tales of pie theft. Yeah, pie theft was actually you know a, a, a real problem. Um, pie thieves would actually make sort of hooks long hooks that you could fit through the grates of a larder so they could actually hook the pie and, and take it and out. And steal it. Yeah, and steal <laughs> it. How, how much would a pie set you back in the Tudor period? Do we have well, any idea? It, de it depends. I mean, um, for a commoner, it would be the equivalent of about two months' wages for a wow. decent pie with spices and things like that. Two months' wages? Wow. For, for, you know. I, I suppose the, the expense comes from the fact that it, you just need so much time and energy to make yeah. these things, well, right? You need the wood, you need to fire up the, the massive oven, all that kind of stuff. The other thing is we're making this pie in a day. Ordinarily, this would actually be about four days' work with all the resting periods and things like that okay. in between. So we're kind of fast-tracking this. It's not already ready meal, right. is it? Right, <laughs> no. Okay, no. so you've got the shape there. Yep, so what we're going to do is I'm going to put just a little bit of water in a cup. And we just, if you imagine the corners mm -hmm. like yep. that, okay. I'm just going to wet these a little bit. Because what we're going to do is we're going to fold these up and then trim them. Got it, okay. And I'll show you one corner and you can have a go at another one. Okay. So what we're going to do because this makes it much, much easier ah. if you've not done it before. We can lay the pastry over the top like that. That's and handy. so we bring the corner down, so yeah. if I, like that. We push it together like that, and just give it a little squeeze, and you can see that's forming. Pastry, okay, this, should I try so, with that? So that if you want to try with that corner. Literally just tree it out. Like that, or do you? That's it? No, yeah. you give it a good, you know, give it a good pinch. You, okay. know, you, you want it to seal. Yeah, true. So if you want to okay. try on that yeah. one. Do we need to flour so our So what we need or? to, yeah, make sure these sides are nice and tight. Okay, I'm just sort of pinch that. So in. it is just like wrapping a present. Yeah. No, nah, not very good at that. <laughs> yeah, no, that's looking okay. And so what we can do now. <laughs> it's looking okay. <laughs> yeah, is we're going to trim it. It's to take shape, isn't it? Yeah, we're going to trim this off just above the line. So we, we get our approximate depth. 
Would they have used the uh, excess pastry for anything? Yeah, you may use, use the excess for making uh, decorations and things like that to go on it. Um, the other thing is as well, is any leftover pastry will get used for making other smaller pies and tartlets and things like that. So depending on what you're cooking on the day, and then again, just dip our finger in the water, okay. rub that over the edge, oh, yeah, and then pinch that. it round, and then smooth it in. And when I said, you know, about it being like modeling clay, you can see what I mean. <laughs> you are yeah. kind of. Okay, so we, can we have a go at that? Just yeah, so, we, so take I just, mind, just trim that down, not too close. You okay, want to leave about, you want to leave about a finger's width down the line. Okay, yeah, that's without chopping off Without chopping your finger, yeah. I did have a friend who I once made the mistake. He was asking how big I wanted the kindling for the fire. And I said, oh, finger width pleases. So he was placing okay. his finger on the thing <laughs> and then just doing... Dunk Don't it in tell the, us yeah. Dunk it in the water. That's it. And then put it all there and then just... And then fold it all over and smooth it down. Oh God. Nice looks, job, pal. Looks like and then a, you uh, can take like a, a little uh, there we go. rounded Sorry. spatula and you can actually... Give it a spank. Give it a spank <laughs> and tap it round just to make sure it's nice and smooth all the way around like that. I'm not sure we'll be appearing on Bake Off anytime soon, but with Alex's guidance, our pie was progressing. Next up, the filling. Um, okay. Right, yeah, so this is prepped. So now we need to put this somewhere cool, away from the fire. Yeah. Uh, while that's cooling, we can get on and do the actual filling. Great, excited. Amazing. Okay, it's time to prepare the meat. So what we're gonna do, we'll flip the board. Always important, yeah. Nice. So nice clean service. Um, we'll start off with the spices. Okay. Obviously, these are the showpiece. Yeah. Yes. Um, and so, yeah, the spices you've got here, so, so coming mainly we, from, you know, places like the Middle East. And yes, a lot of these spices actually only grew in one area. Yeah. Um, it was much later, once we started sort of going into places like the Caribbean and things mm -hmm. like that, we were able to grow different spices elsewhere. Yeah. Uh, pepper is a fine example. Um, you've got two types of pepper. Here we've got the... Uh, peppercorns, yeah. but this is also long pepper, so this would be coming from sort of like the Middle East. Um, both have that warming flavour, mm -hmm. um, but the long pepper is slightly milder. I mean, you've got here, uh, these are the actual pepper flowers. Oh, so if you wow. pick one of these, you know, inside oh, yeah, here, it's got a little... th these aren't particularly big ones, but there are, there's the tiny little peppercorn, these yeah, are quite yeah. natural. So, um, but they would be used as, you know, the pepper flowers would often be used as decoration. So what we're going to do, we'll break up a long pepper and one, two, three, four, we'll be up in five oh, peppercorns. Wow. You can give them a little little stamp. Okay, right. Um, also what we've can got we try, here. Can we try and guess what these are? Will, will we recognise oh, them? Well, we try? you should do. You should recognise those. This uh, that is... <laughs> that's a, well, it's a mold, is it cinnamon? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try. Let's see. Oh god. <laughs> so, oh, 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 um it's a, thyme? Not thyme. No, it's a mulled wine. It's a mold, you'd yeah. have it in mulled wine. This is really embarrassing. I don't know what it is. I recognise the smell more than the taste or sort of Christmas maybe. Christmas and Easter is not Christmas and Easter without them. I'll put you out of your misery. They're cloves. <laughs> cloves. Oh, no. <laughs> now this I, I won't even ask you what this is, but if you have a look at that, do you know what that might be? Is this harder or uh, easier Much to harder. Guess? We don't tend to use it very much Ooh. today. No, not saffron. No. no. Not saffron, no. Right, my guess. That was my guess. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, not, it's not really got much of a smell to it, has it? No, again, once that's, you that's pound it. That's not a guess. <laughs> no, it's mace. Mace. Yeah, this yeah. it's the outer membrane of the nutmeg. So when you get nutmeg, the nut itself has got this little membrane around it. That's peeled off and dried, and that's yeah. that's, that's mace. That's mace. And, uh, you, use, you use mace in you use them about oh, curry, curries? Yeah, in curries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Again, very Middle Eastern flavours. Yeah. Uh, we're going to put a little pinch of salt in there as well. I can't get that clove taste. Oh, it's good. <laughs> yeah, we're going to need going to need a bit more mince pie flavour, <laughs> yeah. aren't we? we Finally, this. and this one's normally kept as with the others under lock and key. Okay. Which, that one you will know. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, he knows, doesn't he? <laughs> well, it's, it, it's yeah, that, that's very expensive even today, isn't it? It is. It's worth more than is that gold. Saffron? That is yeah, saffron. That's saffron. We're not going to yeah. put a huge amount. We're going to put a little bit of saffron in there. That's probably, yeah. 
There we go, that's probably about a week's wages. No, that's nearly ground, come on. Bit of elbow yeah, grease. Yeah, I didn't really, Bit of elbow uh, grease. You've, sh you've shown me up there. <laughs> it's almost like I've done it before. Right, there we go. Right, now those spices are... Oh, yeah. Mmm, yeah, that smells yeah. good. Yeah, that smells clove, like Christmas, there, doesn't definitely. it? Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to sprinkle that all over the meat. In fact, we'll be a very opulent. Yeah. It can all go in. This, wow. And the thing is, you wouldn't waste the little bits that are left. No. Uh, for other dishes, you would take a piece of bread, wipe that out with the bread, and then you would put the bread in the dish. So, you know, nothing's wasted. Yeah, yeah. Good. Right, now we're going to go on to the fr um, fruits. And these are dried fruits. We'll be using a good handful of currants, raisins and prunes, all finely chopped, ready for the mince filling. Finally a task I could easily handle. But what were some of the most hazardous jobs in the kitchen? There were certain jobs that were quite bad. Uh, one of them was um, uh, the spit boy, for example. It'd be a young boy who would be sat next to the fire turning the spit but you're basically sat roasting yourself yeah. as well as the meat. Yeah, not great now, for the eyes. Not no. great for the I eyes. Mind the job not today, actually. But <laughs> funny enough, it was actually a thing where the cook, you know, the, the head cook would actually uh, be kind if he let you swap sides on the spit so you didn't get too yeah, burnt on one side because there were rec records of some children having all the skin on one side of them as they were growing up. Wow, they, they were being cooked along with yeah. the meat, crikey. Well, there were, there were some wonderful inventions for it as well. You know, with the big kitchens, you had these huge weights and pulley systems that would automatically turn the spit as the weight dropped. Or even, I've seen uh, records of where you would have basically, a, um, you know, like a giant hamster wheel, yeah. but with a dog in it, and the dog walking uh, would turn the spit. Okay. Incredible. The giant Tudor hamster wheel sounds like a brilliant idea for a future challenge video. But moving on, it was time to add the dried fruits to the mince mix. As if we didn't have enough of it, we also added suet, an animal fat that was used regularly in Tudor cooking and will help bind our mince in the oven. We're adding about 150 grams. Yep, that's all mixed in beautifully, so we're now Thank ready you. for the actual coffin, so that should have chilled. So I'll go and grab yep. that. Ready for the coffin. Yes. I don't think I am yet. <laughs> <laughs> After you taste it, maybe you're with. So here we go. Our coffin has been cooling on the shelf in the larder. So you can right. see that's stiffened up quite nicely now. Yep. So if we put the meat over to one side, we'll clear the decks. And hopefully, if things have gone right. Moment of truth. Moment of truth, here we go. A little bit stuck there. Come on. Yeah, that would be Louis. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Too much water on that corner. Come on. Maybe that was. Me. There we are. Done. Excellent. Brilliant. That looks. So you can see that you can see why they were called <laughs> yeah, a coffin. Definitely. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <initially>. <laughs> but also they're also <laughs> referred to as mangers. Okay. okay. Because that's, that's not yeah. Christmas, it, <laughs> it actually was supposed to represent the manger that Jesus was uh, put into. So. I don't know who did that corner. There's a tiny little, oh, I, tiny little pinhole. I don't so know. you're asking about we'll have what to do check we the do footage. with a spare instant replay VAR. Yeah, yeah. You ask what we do with a spare pastry. So we can just repair. We yeah. can just do a quick repair. So we just roll that into a little sausage. Get it nice and warm. Little, sorry. I won't stick my finger in your water. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Who said Tudor kitchens weren't hygienic? <laughs> there we go, we'll just press that in there and no one will ever know the difference. With a sturdy coffin prepared, we added the mince and filled our pie to the brim, making sure the ingredients were nice and compact. And using another sheet of pastry for the lid, we just needed to seal it off by crimping the edges between finger and thumb. Okay, so we're ready for some, some decorations on top. Yeah, and they're really simple to do. Again, we'll chuck a little bit of flour on the board. Bring back the ex excess, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Obviously, again, it's a, a sign of, of your uh, fealty, as it were, to your king or, in this case, queen. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a mark of celebration. Yeah, I guess you wouldn't want to make the mistake of putting the wrong Queen's heraldry on when you, when you serve no. it to Henry VIII. So. <laughs> so oh, here's something we can do. Yeah. yeah. So all you do, just push it down on the pastry, give it a little wobble, lift it up, 
and then with your finger, just tap it out. Got it. So you need okay. five, five of each, so you need another five four of each. those okay. and five of those. To finish our pie, we were decorating it with a Tudor rose. Instead of a pastry brush, we used a sprig of rosemary to apply egg wash, ensuring our royal emblem will stick in place. Yep. I'm going to place that on top. That's it. There we go. And then we're going to take our meat spike and we're going to plunge that straight through the center like that. Give that a little wiggle and that will allow steam to come oh, out of the pie. It. Would it explode if we didn't do that? <laughs> it would spit out the edges. So I think you've done, that's quite a commendable job. I'll lift this to the camera. Good, yeah. But I think that looks quite good. Yeah, all me as well. So. All you, yes. <laughs> After Alex terrified us by demonstrating just how solidly constructed our pie was, we applied more egg wash to the surface of the pastry. Then it was time to go in the Tudor oven for around an hour. It would be a tense wait. We wouldn't be able to see into the oven as the edges of the door were roughly sealed with clay. All we could think to do to calm our nerves was have a Tudor Christmas tipple. Well, I've heard there might be some beer on the go. There is, and it's a uh, recipe from the uh, Good Housewife, which was a cookbook of a, uh, a, I think it was around the 1580s. And it's one of the earliest records of what's called butter beer. Butter beer? Yeah, ah, this was kind of- Harry Potter. Yeah, very, <laughs> I was about to say, it's been made famous by the whole Harry Potter, um, but they weren't drinking real butter beer. I'll be honest with you, it's an acquired taste. Okay. But you normally acquire that taste by about the fourth sip. Fourth. Okay. So you is start it, off that, going. It's that strong, is it? Uh, is this a warm drink? It I is hope a warm so. drink. Yes, it is. <laughs> I hope well, it's this warm. is what. Well, traditionally, if you were higher classes, uh, higher class, you would actually be more likely drinking wine or hippocras, as it was called, hippocras, mm -hmm. which is a spiced wine, yeah. and sometimes that would be served hot as well. Today we have mulled wine at Christmas. Again, it's still, you know, the echoes of that still come, you know, a spiced wine, you know, but again, it's opulence. Also, depending on the quality of the wine, yeah. adding sweetness and uh, spice to it could improve a slightly duff wine. Right, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. The Romans uh, used to put wine into uh, lead pots because it would sweeten the wine. Unfortunately, it sweetened the wine by reacting with the lead, yeah. creating a lead yeah. oxide, and lead which poison. is sweet and lead poison. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, you know. Lead's not ideal. No, it's not. To make the butter beer, Alex brought around a pint of good quality lager to a simmer over the fire, before adding crushed cloves, dried ginger, and nutmeg. Whilst I whisked a couple of egg yolks and added to the mixture, Alex then added a dollop of butter before whisking the remaining mixture all together. It was now time for a toast. Originally, you know, when you actually um, clash drinks, the idea would be that your guest would slop some of their drink into yours, into yours. to show it wasn't poisoned. Oh, so really? if you drank oh. it, it meant that there's no skull going on. Yeah, that is, that is, that's <laughs> so how about just good health? Yeah, good health. Good everyone. health, yes. good health. Happy Christmas, um, viewers. Yeah. <laughs> Keep drinking. I told you it's about the fourth sip. It's about the fourth sip. You start going, ah, it now makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> it's oh. it's what it's yeah. yeah, it's it's a it's a little bit fragrant, isn't it? For mm -hmm. No, it's it's nice. It's it's definitely warming the cockles. Mm. You haven't poisoned this, have you? No. <laughs> I'm drinking from the same batch. <laughs> If you've finished enjoying your beer, I think it's probably about time to take that uh, pie out of the oven yeah. and we could set out a small feast. Let's do it. Let's this do is it, the bit Alex. we've been waiting for. Yep. <laughs> okay. Luckily, there were plenty of dishes that Alex had prepared earlier and after a hard day in the kitchen, we were ready to reveal our centrepiece. Right, okay. Right, the thing is, it's been sealed in there, so until we open that, we've no idea how it's going to be. Yeah, what it looks moment like. of truth. So, okay. you know, say a prayer to the uh, the god of pies and... Okay, uh, so I just yank it open this yeah, way. Yeah, that's it. There we go. There we go. All right, Ooh. well, do you know what? It's there not we looking... Go. It's not looking too bad, is it? Place this down here. Got it? 
Yeah. There you go. I've got a heat glove on, so I'll just bring that back a little bit. Okay. okay. I'll tell you what, it's not looking too bad. There we go. The glaze is looking nice. Super careful here. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, if we, that would be if you sad, just point yeah. down, there we go. There we go. That's it. Um, Good job, awesome. mate. That has right. Ooh, do you so know we've what? got everything here now. I tell you what, we'll do a reveal. If you put the glove on, okay. I'm going to lift the pie up. Yep. And you take the uh, the cooking uh, vessel up and just okay. place it down on the floor to cool. Okay. Cool. So after three, one, two, three, up. Go, go, go! It's hot, hot, hot. There we are. <laughs> place that down there. Do you know that's, what, chaps? That's looking that's pretty nice. Pretty isn't it? good. That's oh, not bad. I'm, I'm loving the glaze on the it's top. It's all about the, way the glaze. Yeah. Who, who, who did the crimping on this side, though? Um, uh, is, why is it matter? <laughs> Depends. I don't actually know. I don't know. No, it's held together. It's the pastry has got a, a nice crust to it. Yeah. So that's been in for an hour. That's been that's in all, for an hour. That's all you need. And uh, depending on the oven. Yeah. Again, it's a case of you gauge the heat. You gauge how long it's going to be. You know. Uh, and then hope it doesn't burn. <laughs> we're just going to give that one moment to cool down. And then yeah, before these we try generally this were served cold. In fact, most pies and things, they were served most, cold. Oh, okay. most dishes were actually served cold. They didn't tend to eat a great deal of hot food. Uh, again, they thought it would imbalance the humours. Ah, okay, so, interesting. Uh, well, I mean, one big question we haven't asked you yet mm -hmm. is, would a meal like this be served on Christmas Day? Did, did Christmas work in the same way as it does now? Yeah, the idea of gift giving, that would be done on Christmas Eve. Um, these are things that go right back to pagan traditions as well. Um, even hanging ornaments on trees go back. They would hang ornaments that would represent the sun and the moon and they would um, mourn the loss of people who had died over the year, things like that. Um, if you go to the Roman period of Saturnalia, yeah, of Pigs made a great gift, so they would gift each other sort of pork produces, whether it be sausages or you know uh, a cured meat or something like that. In uh, the Tudor period, it's when you started getting um, pies that had beans, hard beans baked into them, that would select the king of or you know the lord, sorry, of misrule, and you could right. do be silly and yeah. all the rest of it within reason. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> We've all had bosses that will say, yeah, you can have as much fun as you like, yeah. <laughs> but there's a definite line. <laughs> if, if you're the servant in a Tudor household, you're, you're going to be careful, I imagine, yes. even in that yes, situation. Yes, absolutely. Um, I kind of want to get tucked into this, if that's all right. What, what, can, we, what can we eat? Um, you, well, you can eat absolutely everything. Wow. Again, with Tudor food, there wasn't a courses as we think of it today that's very much a french affectation where you have meals served Starters, in courses mains, and that's yeah. kind of 18th century as well it wasn't you know in the tudor period you would lay out a table like this and you would take you know you would be sat and take bits almost like a buffet table. sort of thing almost yes yeah. so i've got a, a loaf here and uh, so this is our plate this is our plate this is referred to as a trencher uh, if you were higher status you would actually have a pewter plate kind of mm -hmm. like this one um, slightly lower, you would have wooden trenches like this one. Yeah. Um, but basically, the bottom of the loaf... An edible plate. ...would be your <laughs> edible plate, because the bottom gets slightly burnt in the oven. Yeah. Remember I was saying about the hot bricks. Uh, and that bit would be eaten and usually given to the higher table. And that's your upper crust. Upper crust. Ah, ah. Is that what, that's where the phrase comes from. Yeah. Very interesting. So there's your plate. Thank you. So first thing we've got... Here we've got some venison. One of King Henry VIII's favourite fav dishes. Well, <laughs> hunting deer was the um, only open to the higher classes. You know, if you were caught shooting deer as a lower class person, uh, yeah, you would be a, very badly yeah, punished. Because most Sorry. land was owned by the crown or... or Absolutely. So nobility. we're higher status landowners. Here we go. I will give okay, you so your meat venison. spike. Oh, OK. So, so And this meat's meat been cut into what's called gobbets. Gobbets are mouthfuls. So each piece is cut to a nice mouthful. Ah. The idea, I mean, you've seen the old sort of films from the 1950s where Henry VIII sat at the table biting into a leg and throwing yeah. it over his shoulder to the dogs and things yeah. like that. Okay. That wouldn't actually happen. Let's have a taste. Mm. That is beautiful. Oh, no, my oh, I love the flavour. It's been sort of marinated in, in something. Mm -hmm. That's been marinated actually in Porto. Oh, port. oh, lovely. So you've got port, you've got um, shallots. 
There's nutmeg, oh, um, there's a little bit of ginger, uh, pepper, salt, and it's very, very slow cooked. So that would be put yeah. in the pot next to the fire to just give a very light simmer. Yeah. Okay, so we've had the uh, venison, then it'll well, be over to these, these, these are, eggs. These are stuffed eggs. Stuffed um, eggs okay. So again, these are a strange to our modern senses, sort of mix of flavors. Uh, you've got your egg, but that's again mixed with um, dates, um, there's raisins in there, there's mm. the ubiquitous rose water, the Tudors put rose water in everything. <laughs> um, and there's also herbs, so you've got parsley in there, there's some sage, so it's, uh, and then it's mixed with butter and whipped egg whites. Mm. The sweet and the mm -hmm. savoury mix is really, really delicious. Yeah. I, I really but like But that. this kind of goes back to medieval, and if you think about Middle Eastern cookery, it's very Middle Eastern in its yeah. kind of, I'm going to finish mine because I'm, I'm quite finish. enjoying it. <laughs> yeah. So what next? Okay, so you want to challenge your taste buds. Yeah, yes. give us something extreme. This will give you an idea of the kind of sweetness levels that the Tudors were uh, enjoying. Okay. So this is called snow. And, uh, snow, okay. Yeah, it's designed to look like snow and it's whipped egg whites, sugar, again, the ubiquitous rose water, is in there as well. Right. <laughs> there goes nothing. And cream as well. Oh yeah. The rose water. Straight yeah. away. Yeah. 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 I think you can't really have too many spoonfuls of this. No, I'll tell you what, you wouldn't you wouldn't be eating loads of it, would you? It's not it, it's quite nice. It's pleasant. Yeah. Uh, it's like melted icing. It would often it yeah. would usually be served with wafers as well. So you would dip Ooh. wafers into it as well, so you'd have these biscuit wafers that would temper it, but it gives you an idea of that uh, intensity yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. of sweetness. Because I'm not a sweet tooth as it is, so no. I mean, that is really extreme for me. Um, All great for wetting the appetite, but we couldn't put it off any longer. Our Tudor mince pie had cooled down enough, and it was time for us to try a slice. Okay, moment of truth. Oh, the sound's <laughs> broken off a little bit. Yeah. Open that up. <laughs> for slight, slight. Presentation, yeah. this four is, out of ten. This is why you wait for it to be cool. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, it will slice better. But it looks pretty nice inside. Yeah, but this, I'm getting those smells. The smells mm. straight away. Mm. The spices, it's just so, so rich. So, yeah. uh, right, I'm going to have a try. Yeah, let's take a little piece of the meat. Yeah, let me try some of that meat. Oh, wow. Hmm. Simple but effective. That's my favourite so far. Mm. Again, it's the it's <coughs> the sweet and savoury combining with the meat. Yeah, it almost reminds you of like a Moroccan crap casserole sort of thing with that sweetness of the of the uh, raisins. But it's also the fact that the meat is oh, incredibly delicious. tender. It is proper sort of melt in the mouth. You don't have to chew no, much. No, not <laughs> at all. Let's try mm. the uh, pastry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lovely. Tudor cookery challenge done, and what a treat for the senses. But it couldn't have happened without our expert chef. Well, Alex, this has been absolutely an amazing experience, and thank you so much for le letting us taste all of these different <laughs> uh, uh, items. Uh, where can we find more about the sort of Time Traveller's Kitchen and more recipes from, from history? Uh, well, I'm often uploading recipes to my Facebook page, The Time Traveller's Kitchen. Okay. Um, and also on Instagram as well, which is at The Time Traveller's Kitchen. Um, and with any luck, if I play my cards right, there potentially might be an actual book coming out, possibly spring 2024. Brilliant. Yeah, we'll look forward to that. And thank you very much to John, who's been operating the oven and course, for the yeah. Weald and Downland Museum for hosting us in this amazing Tudor kitchen. It's been a pleasure to be in here, to be honest. Yeah. It's lovely. Yeah. A bit smoky, sorry. <laughs> a little bit smoky, a little bit, you know, more butter beer, that's what's <laughs> yeah, needed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, Merry Christmas yeah, to Merry everyone Christmas, watching. guys, and see you soon. Welcome to the History Hit YouTube channel. Hope you enjoyed that video. And if you'd like to see more videos where we attempt to try and bring history to life, uh, please don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Cheers, guys. See you soon.